Hello again, friends, and welcome to the second part of the Bilgewater lore series. This part will cover the main champions as well as minor characters that are associated with Bilgewater. Uh, we will go over the champions by covering basics about them, uh, and then I will go into more complicated parts and go over all the times they are mentioned in short stories or in character backgrounds. Um, some rules are like I will not include a character or account a character, sorry, as a minor character, unless they are mentioned more than once from what I was reading. So, for example, I'm not going to include uh, Zyglos from Misfortune's short story as a minor character, because that's the only story he appears in, and he's not mentioned by name any other time. However, in terms of like a champion, if they are not specifically mentioned by name in a short story, I will include like personal speculation about certain times that they were mentioned. So let us begin with the Bilgewater's big bad Reaver King himself, uh, Gangplank. Uh, I couldn't find his real name. It might just be his my, real name might just be his first name and his last name is Gangplank, but probably not. This might be like an insight or it might be like actually a secret. Let me know down in, like in the comments if somebody can find it. As far as his age, he's old, like at least 10 to 15 years older than his fortune because he was old enough to be like a full, fully-fledged pirate when she was still young. Uh, he's human, his gender is male, and his allies include Alawi, like sort of. She doesn't really count as like anyone's ally. Um, and then Miss Fortune during the first Harrowing in Bilgewater where they teamed up to push back the Black Mist. But, you know, as you know, like his enemies include Miss Fortune who allegedly killed him uh, before, like actually she failed. But she did blow up his ship and destroy a lot of his support. Uh, other enemies include Graves and Twisted Fate, whom he captured but they escaped. Um, Swain, because he stole, he stole Swain's personal ship. And Zed, because he ransacked Zed's temple in Ionia. So significant events that Gangplank participated in are the stealing of the Leviathan, which is Swain's ship, uh, in which he killed a ton of Noxians and um, made made Swain himself hate Gangplank. The battle for Bilgewater, which is when he allegedly was killed by Misfortune when she sank his ship the Deadpool and set it to flames. And then a lot of different gangs and crews started battling for control over Bilgewater. Um, Naga Kaburos' test is one, which is in, you can read it in Alawi's Burden. He was tested his spirit and he was found to have a destiny and a path and this was after he was supposedly killed so he's gonna he's gonna have something to do so ransacking the temple of the jagged knife which is zed's temple is a significant event as well as the battle of knife straits which is the first harrowing that i said when he teamed up with his fortune and they lost to the shadow isles Short stories he's specifically mentioned by name are The Burden, Blood in the Water, Burning Tides, Down Among Dead Men, Shadow and Fortune, as well as Misfortune's comic Fortune Smiles. So Gangplank is like, he used to be the pirate lord of Bilgewater, ruling it with, you can't really say an iron fist because it's more of like a lackadaisical approach, unless someone directly interfered in his plans, then he ruled them with an iron fist and killed them probably and until he was killed by misfortune supposedly but he actually escaped the burning wreckage of his ship and threatened a pirate to um to, to cut off his arm and then he got a new mechanical one and he was tested by a Lowie after that to see if she would get uh to get him Islander support, which he did. And that's about where the, that's about up until the current lore. So, you know, like we've been talking to her about her a lot with Gangplanks. So we're gonna bring up the woman now who brought down Gangplank at the height of his power, Miss Fortune. Her real name is Sarah Fortune. Her age is probably her early to mid twenties because she was young when she was like under 10 years old or around 10 years old when gangplank murdered her family and then she you know matured and then returned to bilgewater and became a bounty hunter she is also a human so most of the people we're going to talk about 
r slash war human at one point as far as bilge water lore um she is female her ally allies are twisted fate and graves like sort of because they sort of helped her in the battle of bilgewater in taking down gangplank she kind of baited them by making them get captured but then they escaped because of her actions so you can say they're sort of allies i don't think they're necessarily allies but they're definitely not enemies her allies are also alawi in a way because alawi wants to test her and if she passes nagake bruce's test then then alawi will approve uh her allies from the Harrowing mentioned in Shadow and Fortune are Lucian. Uh, she helped. He helped her fight against the Harrowing. Uh, Olaf helped her fight against the Harrowing. And then her ally that's not a champion is Rafen, who is her first mate. Her enemies only include Gangplank and pretty much any of his allies. Significant events from his fortune include the Battle for Bilgewater, like she started it by supposedly killing Gangplank. The Battle of Knife Straits, which again, that was that first harrowing where she teamed up with Gangplank and they got wrecked. Um, Nagake Bruce's harrowing, which is what I'm going to call the, the harrowing mentioned in Shadow and Fortune from now on. It's the one that um, Alawi summoned Nagake Bruce to directly intervene and push back people from the Shadow Isles. Um, so yeah, she participated in that along with Lucian and Olaf, as I said. She is mentioned in the short stories Down Among Dead Men, Burning Tides, The Burden, Shadow and Fortune, and her comic Fortune Smiles. And in TF's short story called Double Down, he says that he sees a red-haired bounty hunter. So it can be assumed that that's misfortune, even though it could also not be misfortune. So as far as her personal lore, she did, like her real only life goal was to take down Gangplank and secure uh bilgewater for like vengeance for her family because he murdered her her mom when she was young because her mom said gangplank wasn't worthy of the guns that she made him so once she succeeded she began to start vying for power in bilgewater you know i think mostly it was because she didn't want it to fall to Gangplank's enemies, like she had Gangplank's al sorry allies, Gangplank's allies hunted down by her crewmates, and she didn't really want the uh, the city to fall into like really bad hands, even though it already was, and it did. But her words after um, Gangplank's death in, I believe it is Burning Tides, Rafen says he'd heard words similar to what she's saying, but never from her, so she begins acting like Gangplank after he's dead for Bilgewater power. So that's just interesting to note. And that about leads up to uh, the current Bilgewater lore. I don't think really we have anything that goes too much past um, Gangplank's supposed death and return from the Battle of Bilgewater. There's not that much written after that as in, far of, in terms of League of Legends personal timeline. So the next character, who is also like the last character with a true allegiance to Bilgewater on this list, um, and it's only because of the Mother Serpent, is Alawi. So her real name, I'm pretty sure it's just Alawi, but if I made a mistake, you guys feel free to correct me in the comments. Um, her age is probably around Gangplanks. If I had to guess, I'd say she's probably a little bit younger than him but she could also very well be just a little bit older than him she is also human her gender is female her allies she doesn't really like technically have any that's why during all of the other peoples i said her allies their allies were her sort of because sort of her allies but not actually so yeah um her enemies really only include like those of Nagake Burios, especially the undead from the Shadow Isles. Um, yeah, so significant events, really. She's only, is Nagake Burios' test from the burden when she tested Gangplank and found him to be worthy, as well as Nagake Burios' harrowing, you know, where she directly summoned the Mother Serpent and stopped the Shadow Isles from overrunning Bilgewater. 
as well as those are the only two short stories she's mentioned in are The Burden, which is her own short story, as well as Shadow and Fortune. Um, so she doesn't really seem to do much as far as lore goes. There's not that much on her. She just, we just know that she's really key because that she is the head priestess in the main religion of Bilgewater. So she's really important in Bilgewater lore, even though she's not really mentioned too much. So now we're going to follow up with the last real Bilgewater character, even though he doesn't actually have an allegiance to the actual city. Uh, we're going to go with a newcomer on the block, Pike. His real name, I'm pretty sure, is Pike, because Lars calls him that. I don't know why none of these people have last names or first names, but they don't. Uh, his age, he was young at the time of death. His race is probably, or his, he was previously human, he's now undead. He's male, he doesn't really have any allies, and his enemies are everyone unlucky enough to cross him, especially those that were on the ship when he was, when his line was cut by the new nervous captain. So like Lars, who's the storyteller in the new audio dramas, um, can be counted as one of his enemies. Uh, significant events, he doesn't really have any. Uh, and the only short story he's mentioned in is his own, which is Then Teeth. And he's also mentioned in the Pike audio drama. But that's not really, it's only like two minutes. It's not, it doesn't count as a full short story. Um, so Pike, he's just kind of like, he was a really good harpooner in that he would jump down and like tangle with the beasts one on one and get parts of them that couldn't be harvested after they were dead that had to be harvested while they were living. So he made some de captains some dank bank. And yeah, that's about all Pike did. And then he was on a road with a new captain and he, he, his line got cut when he was in the mouth of the fish. It was, I think it's a Gerald fish, or I don't know how you pronounce it, but he, the only thing he saw was a bunch of faces on deck and then teeth. So every time he kills someone and crosses their name off of his list, he remembers them staring at him as he fell down into the fish's mouth and then he remembers teeth from the, t the fish closing its mouth on him. So next is the dynamic duo from Bilgewater, but they are like relatively loosely associated with Bilgewater because they perform their duties all around Valoran, not just in Bilgewater. So the first one we're going to do is Graves. His real name is Malcolm Graves, or his I guess his first name is Malcolm and his real last name is Graves. His age is probably somewhere close to Gangplank, but definitely younger. His race, he's a human. His gender is male. His allies include Twisted Fate. And then Sword of Misfortune, as I've been saying, because she kind of used them to get captured by Gangplank so that she could capitalize on that and start the Battle of Bilgewater in killing him. And his enemies include Gangplank, who hates him now because he thinks that they helped Misfortune, even though like they did it unwittingly, uh, bring him down from power. And then his enemies include Twisted Fate, like temporarily, because he thought that Twisted Fate betrayed him when he didn't. Uh, his significant events include the battle for Bilgewater, in which he got captured by Gangplank and was going to be... Um, punished in front of all of Bilgewater until Misfortune intervened and, you know, supposedly killed him. Significant events. Uh, the other significant event includes the unnamed heist in which Twisted Fate supposedly betrayed him, but didn't actually. And then he was caught and sent to, like, a jail. Uh, he is mentioned by name in Burning Tides which is the battle for Bilgewater slash Gangplank's Falls story, as well as One Last Shot, which is his own personal short story. So Graves, like I said, he doesn't really associate that much with Bilgewater. He's just like a heist dude with a shotgun named Destiny, which coincidentally is the name of Twisted Fate's ultimate, which is cool. And yeah, they just, they're just thieves. Uh, and then now we're going to go over his ally, Twisted Fate. Uh, his real name is Tobias. I don't think it's Tobias Fate, but that would be cool because he's a streamer. Um, his age is probably close to Graves, but definitely a little younger than Graves as well. He is a human, and he is a male. His allies include Graves, as we just went over. They heist together all around Valoran, as well as Misfortune, sort of, again, because she baited him. But then 
use their bait to a pretty good extent. And his enemies include Gangplank, because Gangplank also hates him, because she thinks he was working with Miss Fortune as well, even though he wasn't, like, really. And then significant events also include the battle for Bilgewater, as well as the same unnamed heist. Um, I'm not going to count Graves as his enemy, because he didn't really want to fight Graves, because he knew that he didn't betray Graves. And then he is mentioned in Burning Tides, again, the Battle for Bilgewater story, as well as Double Down, his own personal short story. Uh, yeah, Twisted Fate also doesn't do too much in Bilgewater lore, except for serving as bait for Gangplank's demise. And he does heists around Valoran, and he's a really good gambler. But he says, is it really gambling if you don't, or if you can't lose? So he's probably not actually a gambler, he cheats. Or is OP. So, um, now we're gonna following those that dynamic duo we're gonna have a stream of champions or we're gonna have just a champion sorry who got his start in bilgewater but he now roams the entire ocean of runeterra destroying ships of greedy captains so it it's gonna be nautilus uh his real name is unknown his age is also unknown his race he was a human but he was altered by the depths of the ocean he used to be a male probably still is his allies, he doesn't really have any, or if he does, they're unknown. And his enemies are greedy captains. His significant events include the sinking of the Orphidian, which is one of the new audio dramas in which Lars tells the story of Nautilus destroying the ship of that he was on, just and the ship was called the Orphidian, and as well as the short story, his own personal short story is now the Orphidian. So, Nautilus doesn't do too much, because his lore was just now reworked, so we will probably see him later on. So following Nautilus, we have the exact opposite, so it's a character who started their journey, you know, away from Bilgewater, but ends the current timeline in Bilgewater with uh, Fizz. His real name is Fizz, pretty sure. Uh, his age is unknown, he's probably kind of young, or maybe kind of old, it's unknown. Uh, his race, he's actually a Yordle, uh, he's a male, he doesn't really have any allies. I mean, he probably likes other Yordles though. Um, his enemies include sea monsters because they destroyed his city and he defends Bilgewater from them. So yeah, significant events, don't really, doesn't really have any. And his only short story is the new one they made for him, The Lucky Kraken, which is also an audio drama that you can listen to. So we're going to end the champion list with another king, this time not a reaver king, but the river king, Tom Kench. So his real name is unknown, but it's probably Tom Kench. Well, actually, it's probably not Tom Kench, but that's his most common name. And he has many aliases, including but not limited to the river king, uh, Old Tom, Two Coats, the Great Waddler, and Old Yawn Belly. His age is unknown because he's kind of timeless. His race is also unknown. He's called a demon, and he's listed on the wiki as a gluttony demon. Uh, he's a male. His allies include himself and his enemies. He doesn't actually have any, technically. Um, significant events, he doesn't not participate in any of them. And his only short stories are The Gambler's Woe, and then he's mentioned shortly in Shadow and Fortune because Misfortune hides behind a statue of him when trying to fight off undead in Nagake Bruce's Harrowing. So non-champion characters, like important characters, that I mentioned multiple times in Bilgewater lore, include Rafin, who again is Misfortune's first mate. His age is unknown, but he's probably a little older than Misfortune because he worked under Gangplank. Presumably, because he says that he's heard words, or like this is that same line back where he says, I've heard words like that, but never from her, talking about Misfortune wanting to hunt down all of Gangplank's enemy or allies. So it's presumed that he was talking about Gangplank, so he probably worked under her, or under him, before working under Misfortune. He is a human, he is a male, his allies include Misfortune, and his enemies include Gangplank. Uh, he's her right-hand man, he helped her fight in Nagake Bruce's Harrowing, as well as in the battle for Bilgewater. And like, as well as after that, when they were hunting down Gangplank's allies. And then the other important non-champion is Lars. He's like an old sailor. He's human, he's male. He doesn't 
who knows who his allies and enemies are. Uh, but he's the storyteller in the recent, recent audio dramas, but he is murdered by Pike at the end of them. So that should about do it for uh, some Bilgewater lore. I can definitely cover. I had to do this like kind of fast because there's a lot to talk about. Like this video is already 20 minutes long and I didn't even really talk that much about like personal champion stories. So if you guys want to hear those, go ahead and let me down, let me know down in the comments below. That should about do it for like the basics though, as far as um, Bilgewater lore should go. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and peace.